Check, check, check. We should be good. We should be good. We should be good. But let me know in the chat and we can get that fixed ASAP. Nemon says perfect, beautiful, amazing. David Bukachi, welcome, welcome to the stream. Nemon, welcome to the stream. Again, No Gear, thank you so much. Stefan, good to see you as well. Uh, and everybody else who is slowly making their way in. My official Mike Daly, welcome to the stream as well. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a fun one today. As you can see, we have, well, how many count them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think, maybe eight F-35s that are gonna be escorting us in a C-17. It's gonna be dope. Scape walk to the stream as well. Good to see you, man. I did not get a haircut. No, this is the same cut. <laughs> I'm the same cut, bro. If you guys would like to see where we are, we are at Kilo Delta Sierra. Is that where we at? Where we at? I just forgot. I always forget. We go to so many places that I get lost in, in translation. Uh, yo, Kilo Delta Mike Alpha Davis Monthan Air Force Base, aka it's also a, a graveyard. Uh, if you look off in the distance here, you'll see that there are thousands of retired military and a few civil, or I think it's mostly military aircraft, F-16s out there. We got some C-17 pieces. Pretty much any aircraft you can think of in the military is here. And um, yeah, so basically today's scenario is we have picked up some old aviation parts from the graveyard that are, you know, parts that are still usable. All these planes are not completely, uh, you know, useless. That's what, the reason why they're here is because they got retired. They still have a few parts left that may be good. Um, it's a lot cheaper to use an old part than to go and make a brand new part. So we're picking up some old parts here and we're gonna fly them about 300 miles over to Nellis Air Force Base in the C-17 Globemaster. And we have a very special guest today and it is, make sure I get their name right, the 75th Fighter Wing Grim Reapers. If you are interested in getting a part of a mil sim community of a fighter wing community of a group of guys and girls who love military aircraft and flying together doing real world operations around the world of microsoft flight sim you need to check out the 75th fighter wing rim reaper so that's who you see here in the f-35 this is the next level so they're gonna escort us it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm super honored to have these guys join us today in the stream. Uh, I wish I was able to allow each and every one of them to jump on the mic and shout out, but we can't do that today. But uh, I want to say thank you because I know they can hear me. We are going to have a representative from their team that's going to be talking with us today in the stream and answering any questions you guys may have. A lot of them are actually on Xbox as well. So if you are an Xbox user, and I know there's a ton of you out there, um, don't be don't be worried. Like these guys, a lot of them are based on Xbox and some I'm sure are also on the PC. And again, we'll get some of those questions answered later. We are in the C-17 
Globe Maps. This is a freeware mod on flightsim.to. So if you want to check it out, it's free. It's not new. It's been around for a while. It has uh, animated doors and cargo bay, and you can simulate doing paratrooper drops and whatever it is your imagination can think of. You can do it. It's not a study level aircraft. I'm not going to claim that in any way, um, but it is going to hopefully get us to where we want to go today. All right. All right. So before we start, let me just go ahead and knock this out really quickly. Flight Control Replay V5 is coming out tomorrow, I believe. Yes, some of you guys are already familiar. I've been using Flight Control Replay for my landing replays for a long time. And he just, he is about to release version five. And we'll talk more about that throughout the stream. Uh, I will just really quickly um, show you what it looks like he completely redesigned the ui which was actually a personal request of mine i thought the old ui looks horrible <laughs> it looks super out of date so this is the new ui for flight control replay this is only for pc sadly uh it is available on a sim market and um it is actually not a free update I'm sad to say it. I know some people are going to get upset about that. It's not a free update, but if you do own the old version, you will get a good discount on the new one. Uh, but a lot of new new features, uh, again, has a record button, a new UI. You can actually make it bigger, smaller. You can also, uh, one of my favorite feature features is actually called um, Plain Ghost. Now check this out. I'm going to click on it. Okay, it didn't, it didn't work too well because there's already one here, but basically it'll add another model of your aircraft and you can kind of simulate flying in the formation so if you don't have any friends who play microsoft flight sim but you want to get some dope formation shots you can actually click on this button and it'll duplicate your plane and this plane is actually affected by the wind it matches kind of your bank angle and pitch and things like that but not perfectly there's slight differences there uh, and so you you it kind of looks like a whole nother person is there because our plane is so big it's kind of hard to see you can also customize it by going into the options and go to ghost plane you can set where it's going to show up um like to your right to your left behind you uh altitude offset how far away it is from you a lot of cool features again i'm not going to go into that completely we'll do a whole separate video about it but i want to give you guys a quick sneak peek so we will be using this today uh in different parts of our flight but yes flight control replay v5 coming out tomorrow uh, so thank you to the flight control replay people for allowing me to get an early look at it but yo let's get to the fun stuff um Let's bring on our friend here, just for me. Un, 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 uh, let me unmute him to the stream, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest, uh, not disrespectful, but honest. I don't remember his name, <laughs> so introduce yourself, my friend. <laughs> Are you there? I am. So um, I'm Bloodshot. I'm the operations officer for the 75th Fighter Wing, and uh, I'm here to represent them today and answer any questions you might have about how we uh, conduct our business and how people can join and what they can expect when they get here and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys can just tell by his voice that like, they're legit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he sounds like he'd be commanded and stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> all right, let, let's get to the flight. We'll talk, we have a lot to talk about. I have a lot of questions about your your fighter wing, uh, your mil sim operations, things like that. Um, but um, let me get the plane's already on, so I kind of cheated and skipped that part. Um, but I do have a flight plan in. I'm gonna show you people just a quick look at uh, turning or opening, I should say, opening and closing the cargo bay, which I think is the coolest feature of this plane. Um, I don't even care that it's not like super realistic. I just like that the door is open. So over here on the right side, here in the center pedestal, there is three buttons. There is the open, airdrop, and close button, and then there's also a door ramp, troop doors left and right. So we'll do the troop doors left and right first. Let me get a good view of it. So those are the doors on the left and right side of the wing on the side of the fuselage. So if I click on that button, or both of them, hit that and hit that, you'll see that they start animating close. And it's a very nice animation. And yo, list, wait till you see the gear go up. It's legit. All right, and now that we have all the cargo and personnel on board, we'll also close the main door. This button? No, it's this button. And 
there it is. Very, very nice and smooth animations. Very sweet. I'm, I'm, yeah, this is actually my first time flying the plane um, and I'm just impressed. It's, it's not new, like I said, but it's just, it's impressive how well they, how these freeware projects really just kind of, you know, they really put a lot of effort into this stuff. Um, they could easily have charged us money for a C-17 with no cockpit. I'm just saying. Um, anyways, <laughs> shots fired. Um, okay, cool. So, uh, what's the weather? What runway are we using? I see, see the 35 ta taxi in that way. We'll follow him. We'll go that way. This is the flight deck of the C-17. Lots of things in here. It is a four engine throttle. Uh, let's go ahead and release our brake. There it is. Brakes release. We'll set our flaps for takeoff. I assume it's just one notch or two. No, that's good enough for me. And we'll check, see if track IR is working. Track IR is working. Our joystick is working. Yeah, the C-17 does fly with a joystick, unlike most um, aircraft of its, well, that looked like this. Most military, I think, aircraft have uh, some type of joystick, which is pretty cool. It also does have a working HUD. So if I hit the brightness here, I think, and let me see, did I turn it on? Maybe not. Maybe because I'm trying to show it, it's not working. <laughs> that's as normally you, what happens. Yeah, that's normally what happens. When you, when you want to show something off, it doesn't work. So anyways, I know it works because I've tried it and it worked earlier. Um, but it does have a work. Oh, wait, it's coming up. I think it took a while to, there it is. It took a while to, to activate. Yeah, there it is. Here it comes. What's up, Reese? Cups, welcome to the stream. Emily, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. You guys are doing great. All right, we're clear on the right. Clear on the left, you can see one of the uh, F-35s has already moved up ahead of us. There we go. Now there's nothing really special about the sounds. So we're not gonna focus on that today. What up Josh says that I'm in his favorite military aircraft. Didn't know that man. It's a great plane for sure. It's a really, when you see these in person, you really have an appreciation for just the size of it. Um, one thing I didn't know until a recent air show was um, the capabilities of the short takeoff and landing that it has on multiple types of services. So, I mean, on runways, on dirt, grass. We have 35 flying overhead. I think it's a 35. Yep, 35 flying overhead. And I actually got to see a uh, demonstration right in front of me at the air show. That was, I think, that was the Houston air show last year. Uh, Houston air show actually just happened this past weekend. Sadly, I did not make it out. I really wasn't that inspired. It's, I feel I feel bad for saying this, um, but I really wasn't that inspired <laughs> about going to the Houston air show this year uh, after going to Oshkosh earlier this year. You know, going to like the world's greatest air show when you go to your home local air show and you're like, eh, this is seen that, <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's, it was, um, yeah, I was like, eh, I don't know. But I did get to see, the C I, get, I did get to see the C-17 uh, last time I went, and I was, like, amazed by how fast it could land, how fast it can get up in the air, and the maneuverability in the air as well. Are our lights on? Yep, all of our lights are on. So we're going to shoot for, I don't know, let's try 30,000 feet in this baby. Our flight's about an hour, hour 20, going up to Nellis. Uh, if I didn't mention it before, if you're just joining in the stream, we are in the C-17 Globemaster Freeware um, mod for Microsoft Flight Sim, PC only. But we also are joined by the 75th Fighter Wing Grim Re Reapers, who are going to be escorting us down to Nellis Air Force Base. Now, I think this is our turn. Yeah, it is. So um, how does this work, just real quickly, for people who are watching, uh, whenever you guys are escorting someone, what's kind of your procedure? Well, kind of the procedure is uh, we try to mimic, mimic it off of the what the Air Force actually does, or uh, the military in general, where you would have uh, normally uh, two scout aircraft uh, would take off first. Um, they would be the ones that would clear the airspace, and then you would have your uh, other aircraft would be on each wing, uh, depending on how many they are. It could be, you know, two on each side or four on each side, 
depending on how big the escort is, and then you have someone bringing up the rear. Uh, the sensors and the uh, the radars and, are so powerful in some of these new aircraft that you know, that's really not necessary, but that's kind of like how they do it anyways. But truth be told, you know, you could be all in a circle, and if any enemy aircraft shows up, they're going to pick them up. But uh, just the follow procedures, we just kind of do what they've always done, and that's how they do it. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, I am holding short runway 33 um, here in Tucson, Arizona. I'm going to set my altitude here on the autopilot. Um, I don't have a lot of faith in this autopilot, but we're going to see. Uh, worst case scenario, I had to fly by hand or just put it on altitude hold and heading mode. Uh, I know that those work. Um, I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, it's going to be, for me, as for me, flying is going to be pretty loose as far as me being picky on how the aircraft handles, but uh, I don't expect much from this freeware C-17. Uh, we'll set our speed 250 on the climb out. And uh, we're making a left turn when we leave from A33. So if we can set the heading here, that'd be great. Okay, there we go. I have to admit, it's pretty impressive for freeware. Um, you would think you would have to pay for this. <laughs> a lot of people would charge money for this level of detail, for sure. For sure. Uh, there's probably planes in the marketplace right now that are um, about this detail or even less. I mean, you know, there's not any, like, most of these buttons in here are not clickable, but I mean, that's not a big deal. I mean, as long as you're not trying to be super realistic you're okay i mean we'll, we'll see today how the autopilot does its thing and um if it follows it i basically just created a flight plan in the world map right um, i didn't i wasn't able to find a way to create a custom flight plan inside of here so i just made a world map and uh and went that way I'm trying to get my heading to rotate all the way over there <laughs> just in case we need it my mouse gets a little sticky like cause i use um an Xbox controller and also a mouse, and sometimes they get confused with who's in control. Right. All right, that's good enough. All right, uh, are you guys? Are the is the squad ready? Do I take off oh, first? Oh, they're, they're definitely ready. They, I'm sure they've seen you uh, come to a stop and uh, just stand by. Uh, he's ready to take off, guys. So if you want to go ahead and get the two Scott aircraft up in the air, then he'll take off behind you. Yes, uh, luck for sport. I have definitely had an itch lately uh, for military flight lately. That is true. <laughs> this is our third, I think it's our third stream in a row um, of military inspiration. We did the F-22 flight last week. Uh, we actually attempted to do a DCS world stream. Found out it had right. some issues um, with my performance on DCS. So we ended up going to plan B and hopping in, I think, the F-35 and F-18 on microsoft flight sim it was a lot of fun though i uh, did some um uh some like dog fight practice over in the nellis um training area north of nellis Air Force Base. and we did it on vet sim that was really fun too okay yeah it's always good to have a plan b man <laughs> things <laughs> tend to kind of go awry like when you're trying to show somebody something and all of a sudden what worked before magically doesn't work now so yeah yeah uh flipper cow a firm it is kilo delta mike alpha <clears throat> so I just want to warn you and your crew that there might be some random fighter jets that show up. Um, so they're, they're, they don't mean any harm if they do. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure the, the viewers probably understand that. Uh, they see who's taken off with you. Uh, what tends to happen is we'll be out and about and we'll be on a training mission or, or, or an actual mission and then we'll get some stragglers. But, you know, that's a good recruiting opportunity or, you know, mm -hmm. we just don't have time for that. They just kind of realize that, hey, these guys are doing something and uh we're not involved <laughs> yeah. Super. yeah i mean we're, we're not that type of group we do uh like for people to kind of hang around but you know you really need to join the group if you want to get the meat and potatoes of what we do yeah for sure i think we had something similar happen to us uh what was it uh last week we were flying the 22 i believe and somebody saw us on that sim flying around and decided to just hop in and join us and intercepted us and then ended up bringing him on the vats and comms and uh, you know it's, yeah it's, it's definitely a good recruiting um opportunity i did want to say while we're talking about that um uh, how can people um if they're already like they haven't even seen anything yet if they're already interested in getting a part of your fighter wing how can they like do that 
Well, uh, the first thing they need to do is uh, join that Discord link. Uh, I'm sure you're going to put it in your description. Yeah, I'm going to drop uh, it in the chat lot. right now, actually. So if you guys are looking to join their Discord, I'm dropping it in our chat right now. For those who want, go ahead and continue. Sorry. Yeah, and uh, but a lot of a lot of, because we are the type of group that we are, uh, we're very very hands on with our pilots, and we do like to kind of recruit out in the wild. Uh, there's nothing wrong with coming in through the Discord. Uh, everybody's going to go through the same path. You start off as a cadet, you go through your uh, RL progression, uh, you get to you know you get your rank, you get your patch, and all that stuff, and start doing your training. So it's it's the same path for everybody. It's just uh, we have a very passionate wing commander. Uh, he's very hands-on, and he wants his pilots to be, you know, uh, people of character, um, people that are efficient. And uh, unfortunately, not everybody makes it in. Um, you know, we are, like I say, we're, we're very, uh, we're very proficient at what we do, and uh, we are based off the military. And with the military comes discipline and order. Uh, I mean, we're not totalitarians, but at the same time, you know, we want to have a very good experience for people that are looking for that type of uh, of a military sim. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely get that. Um, I think that's good. I think it makes it that makes the group more prestigious and even more elite. Like the people who do get in, they have a sense of pride that, hey, I went through the training or the qualifications and, you know, the requirements to, to be a part of this group. You know what I mean? Um, and I think it just makes being a part of the group feel more special. Yeah. And then uh, we like longevity. We like activity. So People tend to, uh, if you're working hard to get in some place, you tend to, to stick around and stay. And then once you start flying with the guys and actually doing your missions, doing your training, then it, it forms a brotherhood, a camaraderie. And uh, it's just a good thing, you know, for, for people, like you say, that are sitting here flying around, you know, uh, lone wolf, you know, solo pilot. Well, you get with a group and then you, you get a little bit more out of the sim. Yeah, for sure. All right, I am on the runway, lined up. I see the two scout aircraft ahead of now Airborne, and uh, I am going to go ahead, hold the brakes down, and let's pull it up. I believe the procedure in the manual said 70%, which was surprising to me. Pretty high. Stabilized. The C-17 is very yeah, powerful. Yeah, 17 Yeah, it is. And all right, full power, release the brakes. We're rolling. On runway 33, Toga in the chat. So a fun fact, Blue, is... um. I was in the first 75th Ranger Battalion before I was in a rotary wing aviator cool. uh, and I actually jumped out of the C-17. That is so cool. <laughs> now, I do believe they discontinued it uh, for various reasons, but when it first came out, you know, I'm, I'm giving, my way, giving away my age here, you know, early <laughs> 90s. <laughs> I was airborne and I did uh, get an opportunity to jump out of this bird for uh, two jumps. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's an experience like you wouldn't believe, but it's a very, very uh, powerful opening shock. Uh, not like the C, not like the C one thirty, C one thirty. It's it's almost like a cushion, but you come out the C seventeen and it's going so fast. You know that opening shock is crazy for your parachute. Wow, that is really cool. And from what I understand, and I don't know a whole lot. Um, I, I wasn't in the military myself or anything like that. But when you guys launch or not launch, when you dive out of a C seventeen, maybe same with other military um, transport aircraft, the chute automatically opens. Is that correct? So you have what's called a static line, and this is just for uh, standard jumping. Uh, there is high altitude, low opening, and high altitude, high opening. That's normal, normally a special ops thing. Uh, you know, Navy SEAL, Special Forces, Delta Force, things like that. Uh, but most of the time, if uh, just a general purpose soldier uh, is jumping out, it's going to be static line. And it will just pull out your chute, and it'll open it up, and you know, you guide yourself to the ground, and you continue mission. I, mean, I I didn't know that for the longest. I saw a video, or I, maybe I met somebody. I can't remember how I got introduced to that. I was like, ah, so because I went skydiving myself once, just as a civilian uh, for fun, and obviously right. you, I went tandem because it was my first time. But I remember seeing a video. I was like, wait, that shoot's already open <laughs> when it came out. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? So that's pretty cool. That's really cool. Well, thank you for your service, man. And um, I mean, shoot, we could go on a two-hour flight just asking you questions about how that went. Um, <laughs> But yeah, man, definitely gonna be keeping you in my uh, DMs <laughs> for some things. Uh, you touched on um, a rotor uh, pilot as well. Um, that's something I'm definitely really interested in um, too. Uh, do you do any of that in the sim now, or you, is it that's what you do for a living now? Oh uh, well, I'm actually retired. I'm a disabled veteran. I uh, did 22 and a half years of service, and uh, 13 and a half of those years was a U860 Black Hawk pilot with most of medevac. Uh, mission uh, i did do a little air assault when i was in korea but uh 
for the most part, the majority of my career was uh, air ambulance. Oh, pretty cool. Yeah, I have a, one of my best friends, his wife is uh, a Black Hawk pilot. Nice. Um, she's actually based in Houston now, but before she was in, was she at Austin or Chicago? Yeah, Chicago, I believe. Okay. Yeah, pretty cool. Definitely respect what you guys do out there because I think one thing that Sim uh, can can definitely teach us is the fact that we have to respect these um, these different disciplines um, in aviation because um, I'm pretty sure they're pretty difficult to, to get a hold of in real life. Dre, what's up, my friend? Dre Sanchez. He's a he's a a vet right there in the chat, a Puerto Rican nice. friend. Um, All right. I don't remember what he did. He could probably say it in the chat, um, but I know that he's been recently getting into DCS quite a lot and getting into uh, flying rotor uh, rotor helicopters as well um, in DCS. So me and him have done some, some flying together in the past, trying to do it again in the future. So right now uh, I'm doing about 350 knots, which is quite fast for my altitude, but hey, it's, you know, we're military. We get un unrestricted climb out of here <laughs> um, and passing right. 10,400 now, turning on to my uh, flight plan. Go ahead and get the Flight director, where is the flight director? It's right here. All right, flight director is on. I'm gonna hit L nav, and we'll see if that actually works. You can see here on our GPS, um, the magenta line kind of showing us we are up to the right of our flight track. Um, while you were talking, we had a beautiful view of the gear going up and even rotating into the view. It was, I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> it was so Not nice. Uh, and then as well, we put the flaps up. We're all cleaned up now. Uh, lights are still on for now. We'll leave them on. I'm still flying it by hand, kind of getting to grips with the aircraft as we are leaving Tucson, Arizona. View out here is actually really nice. Uh, I have to say that Microsoft done a good job of depicting the uh, Tucson, Arizona area. It's like pretty much mostly, uh, like, what do you call that stuff? The geographic, whatever. Topographic, geographic. Yeah, the topographic uh, part of the sim. I, I think they did an absolutely beautiful job with weather, the terrain, and all that. Um, hats off to them. Oh, yeah, for sure. We have some more vets in the chat. Um, hold on. Uh, Dave Tarr says, uh, I don't know how to say this, and I want to screw it up, but he was in the M1A1 tanker for six years. Go Army. Wow. Pretty sweet, man. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for you guys. I couldn't do it, to be honest with you. I couldn't. <laughs> I went to um so this lady was trying to recruit me because I was asking her about the Apache <laughs> at an air show. Um, right. I was like, hey, I just want to ask you some questions and we were talking and uh she was like, Yeah, I tried the DCS Apache and you know, we were talking about how like realistic it was and how realis realistic it wasn't. Um and the things that it's missing and stuff like that. And it was a really good conversation. But at the end she's like, Yeah, if you want to fly one of these in real life, you can still do it, you're not too old. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so basically, she, she she tried to change into a, a thing, which was cool. But I was like, yeah, I don't I don't know that I want to go this way, this route with my career right now. Right. Midnight Maverick, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, Deontay Quetis. Welcome to the stream as well. Yeah, I can't wait for Xbox to really get to get some of this stuff and really get to appreciate it. I think you guys will love it. So, are you um, an Xbox? Uh, are you flying on Xbox or do you have a, a, a sim at home? I, I do have a PC, but due to my injuries, um, I had the VR, I had the screens, the chair, and all that stuff. So I kind of wanted to lay in bed. So I used the Xbox Series X. Mm -hmm. um, but I found out recently that I could take my PC and, and set it up that way so that I can still be comfortable and, and fly and all that stuff. But, you know, I got sucked into Xbox and most of the group of the 75th Fighter Wing is Xbox. So I kind of want to be with my guys, you know, so um, I'll, I'll tough it out. I'll wait for the rotary wing to show up and I'll wait for, you know, aircraft to show up a little bit later than PC. But, uh, you know, like I say, I'm, I'm with my guys and, and I'm on the Xbox and that's just what it is for now. Yeah, sounds good. Let me check on my flight plan. Make sure we're going in the right direction because I don't think we are. We're going southeast we should be flying northwest so i'm gonna start banking to the left uh, i think what it was is that my first waypoint because i had a technically a departure in my uh flight plan my first waypoint was southeast of the airport so now we're banking left to go back and uh, re-intercept our flight plan heading back to the northwest so get a nice moderate left bank as we're still climbing past 15,300 speed 308 ish at the moment i'm gonna try to get uh auto throttle on here i'm working on that be a bit more consistent 
Yeah, the auto throttle always seems to help. Um, oh, yeah. Might have to have it binded to take it off sometimes, but. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. I'll say this I'm definitely impressed at how well your pilots fly with Xbox controllers. That's, that's very, very not easy to do. So uh, that is part of the training. Uh, we take them through the ringer. Uh, the first thing that you do when you join the 75th is you will learn to formation fly. Our wing commander uh, ran a Thunderbirds uh, flight squadron, a virtual one, and mm -hmm. he's really big on formation. And it comes in handy when you're doing missions and uh, and we have, we'll have virtual air shows and things like that. So uh, that's one of the first things that our pilots learn to do is fly formation and be that's, proficient with it. That's pretty cool. Really cool. If you guys are just joining the stream, we are in the C-17 Globemaster. This is a freeware add-on for uh, X Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's not new. It's been out for a while. There's no special update, anything like that. Just something I want to fly for fun today. Uh, but we're joined by the 75th Fighter Wing uh, Grim Reapers Squadron. They are a, a group of, uh, I would say, I guess, aviation enthusiasts, I guess, uh, mill simmers um, who are majority on Xbox, from what I hear, but uh, also on PC, PC as well. And they're escorting us over to Nellis Air Force Base as we are traveling with uh, some very classified <laughs> aircraft uh, parts <laughs> from uh, the aircraft graveyard in Tucson, Arizona. So um, pretty cool. I always love hearing stories from um, from vets and, you know, especially with on the aviation side, because you know, it's something that most of us will never really get to see or, or get to experience. We see them in video games and we know that they're exaggerated there. But honestly, from what I hear from some of my the people I know is as well, is that some of the things that do happen, you know, uh, b behind me lines, I should say, or even just out there on in the, uh, what do you, what, what do I think? When you're out there in the service is so crazy that you would never believe it. Um, <laughs> so, um, just love hearing the stories and also thankful that these guys, you know, make it back home and get to be with their families. So, I yeah, uh, aviation is inherently dangerous. Uh, lost a lot of friends in the war and uh, we continue to lose people and you could just lose people from uh, training accidents. So uh, you really need to respect the aircraft. And one good thing about the sim is you, you don't get hurt. You know, you can go out there, you can practice things that you normally wouldn't do in real life. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's just inherently dangerous. And just thank goodness we have a sim that where people can enjoy flying without being injured. So I know you're a bit older now, um, but do you think, uh, what do you think about um, the new generation of pilots that are coming into the military and even into aviation in general? What do you think about them uh, using this sim, I guess, to, for, um, I guess, preparation or for training and things like that? Well, if you got some guys that are uh, aspiring to be pilots, well, this is a good start. You can hop on Microsoft Flight Simulator or DCS and get a, a feel of how uh, flying actually is. But there's nothing that replaces the real thing, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but like I say, it's, it's, it's a good start because once you get into uh, the real training, you'll see that it's a lot more than the actual flying, believe it or not. It's a, it's a lot of physical pre preparation. It's a lot of paperwork. Uh, it's a lot of using your noggin, a lot of math. Uh, a lot of things so um but the actual flying portion and getting used to how these aircraft actually feel and operate especially if it's a high fidelity or steady level level aircraft will uh generally uh give you somewhat of a pre preparation you know give you an idea yeah. so to speak that's cool yeah. that's yeah that's, that's to good people to know um but yeah i'm glad that you know sims are progressing in a way that are not only introducing people to flight sim for the first time i think it going to xbox specifically um is a massive deal because a lot of people a lot more people are able to be exposed to flight sim affordably right because you know before you'd have to have some amazing nasa computer um to really have why can't i turn the lights off well, uh, Blue, I, I did fly on a uh, on a $4,000 Alienware uh, that I purchased years ago uh, when I came off my last deployment. Uh, my last deployment was in 2008. Uh, I think it was KA-50 Black Shark that was out, and I was so in love with it that I, you know, I got the, the virtual reality and I got the high high-end computer and all that. But what you come to realize is that that is very, very expensive, and not everybody else is a middle-aged you know officer in the army that you know can go out and grab this stuff so when it came to xbox it gave pe people an opportunity especially little kids and or, or people that you know just don't can't afford a two thousand dollar pc at that point to yeah. and, and enjoy some 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's just it's it's more accessible than ever it's ever been. Uh, I still support X Plane and DCS. Um, I know those are more expensive options for flight simming, uh, and they're only available on PC and Mac. Uh, right. But uh, Xbox, you know, with it being on Xbox, being on Game Pass, allows for so many more people to enjoy the hobby. Uh, and also, if they want to be serious about it, it's a good entry point for them to just learn about aviation, how things work. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> when I first got Sorry, a flight sim. I tell this story all the time. When I first started flight simming, I didn't know how to navigate, uh, how to use a GPS, any of that stuff, um, how to find an airport. It was just take off from this airport and then just kind of fly until I get bored and then land in the grass somewhere. Um, right. <laughs> I never knew how to find <laughs> an airport. And I actually, I think I stepped away from flight sim for a while because I was like real young. I was on my dad's computer. Uh, right. Later on, I got my own PC, tried out FSX and, or no, it wasn't FSA. I tried out X Plane later on, and finally started to get attached to a virtual airline. And through that virtual airline, they actually had like training materials that they created, PDFs and things like that to kind of teach you how to do basic traffic patterns, how to use a Garmin 530. You know, uh, like all the basics that you need to know really to get into flying from A to B. Uh, and that was super helpful. I was flying with them for I think a couple of years on X Plane nice. 10. Um, so a lot of my stuff that I learned started there and then obviously from there I continued learning uh, through YouTube tutorials and things like that and that's kind of where it leads me today but for your fighter group now I know that there's kind of like a, a standard you guys want to uphold with your with your pilots is there any type of training material or any training programs that you're putting your pilots through um, to make their skills better or maybe they're not that skilled and they but they want to get better like what, what are you guys doing to help them so what yeah. we do, what we do when we induct somebody is uh, you don't have to be the best pilot when you join. And when I say that some people don't make it, it's normally like a personality conflict or they're just you know not as active as we would like. But generally, we'll take somebody that's a lump of clay. Uh, they'll go out with our instructor pilots. They'll go uh, do training missions with us and uh, we, we sharpen them up. We get them to where they need to be. And uh, if if the aircraft behind you that you're screaming right now is a testament to what we do, you can see that the got these guys behind you they're the finished product you know so they can do any of our missions that we ask them to do uh a new guy's not going to be able to do that you know he'll start off you know t wingman tier three work his way up to, to wingman tier one then eventually flight lead and if you're you know the creme de la creme you'll end up being one of our instructor pilots and you'll be able to perform and teach all the aircraft or perform the missions all the missions and teach all the aircraft that is in your particular fighter group because we are separated in, in, in different fighter groups. Can you, so, I, I guess, kind of explain that a little bit? Like, how was the organization of, of the group? I know you said that there's different ranks you go through, like flight lead and stuff like that. Um, but then also there's separate, like, groups as well. Like, can you explain a little bit about that? Okay. Uh, yeah. So Also, uh, by the way, if you can relate to your people, uh, my, my sim, like, froze up for a second. And that's the reason why they jumped ahead. So. Um, All right, uh, <laughs> uh, stand by, and I'll do that. Then I'll hop back and answer your question. All right, hey guys, um, lose them kind of locked. Okay, copy. All right, copy. All right, so uh, they they are, that happens to us a lot, and they say that they caught it, and they're going to go ahead and reform. All right, sounds good. Yeah, so um, so the structure of the group is uh, we're separated by service. So uh, except for Alpha Group, so we have Alpha Group, Bravo Group. Charlie Group, Delta Group, and Fox Group. So Alpha Group is all fifth gen. Uh, our wing commander is a big fifth gen head. He loves fifth gen uh, planes. So he has his own group. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo is the Navy. So Bravo operates the uh, F-A-18, uh, the F-35 Lightning C, and the F-14 Tomcat. Uh, I'm the operations officer, but I also have my group, which is Charlie Group, which is based off the Air Force. Uh, so that would be the F-35 Alpha, uh, eventually the F-22 Raptor when the top mock comes out, uh, the F-16 Fighting Falcon and F-15 Strike Eagle. Um, Delta Group is based off the Marine Corps. That would be the F-35 Lightning B, uh, the F-18 Super Hornet uh, Marine Corps livery. And we do have a Harrier coming in, and that's even though that's legacy, it will be part of the Marine Corps. And also the new Osprey will go to the Marine Corps as well. And the final one is the uh, Fox Group, which is our foreign fighters. And that would be, right now, it's the Typhoon. 
and the uh, SU-30, SU-57, and the MiG-29. So there's a lot of different options for what people want to fly in our group, but don't be fooled because there's a lot of aircraft that doesn't make the quality goes down. That just makes you an expert in that particular aircraft. Right, right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I like I like the, the organ. It sounds very organized. Uh, any ballpark number of like you know how many active members you guys have? Right, my, right now we're hovering about uh, twenty to twenty five. Uh, we have a few people that are inactive, but, uh, you know, people have their real world lives and yeah, we don't course. push. Yeah. We're, you don't have to ever worry about exiting our group for real world life stuff. Uh, you know, death in the family, uh, school. Uh, we, we have people that are going through pilot training, but <laughs> the funny thing is they still want to be part of the group, even though they're, they're actually going through real life pilot training. So, uh, if that's not a testament on how, um, you know, how, how people want to be part of this group then I don't know what is. Yeah, for sure. Um, have you, I mean, you guys may be more in tuned in this subject than I am. Um, have you heard anything at all, any whispers from developers or anything from Microsoft about a, a tanker, like an air to air refueling tanker? Uh, that's supposed to be coming in the next update. And the beautiful Wait, thing about update it. Update 11? Like next Yes. Week? Really? Yeah. It's supposed to be coming in the next update. And the beautiful thing about that is it's study level for free. And we and I failed to mention that we do have another part of our Discord uh, or our group called Strategic Command, and they are doing what you're doing. They're in charge of uh, that's ran by Commander Six Pack. Uh, that's his call sign. Uh, they do all the big heavies and the striped aircraft. It's like if we get a B1 Lancer, right? We just got the 117, the 117s in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's very very excited about this tanker because that's one of the things that we were missing. Uh, when we did our tanker mission last night, we have to simulate the boom and all that. So if this thing has a boom that comes out the back, that will be lovely. <laughs> trust trust me when I say that. It will be very lovely. Oh, man. For, uh, that's one thing I really, really want when it comes to... Yeah, uh, that's one thing I want is is that. <laughs> it's air-to-air -air <laughs> refueling. Now, it's it's going to be difficult. Um, <laughs> uh and they've got to change the you know the distance that you fly from each other and stuff like that, which I think they've adjusted it, haven't they? Um, right. But yeah, it's gonna be difficult. But I'm looking forward to it. that's like I was kind of saying this before the show or for the stream is that one of the reasons why I don't do more military stuff is because you know I play DCS World and it's kind of ruined every other game or sim that has tried to do military aviation. Um, and it's just missing a lot of the combat aspects of it. But there's a lot more military does rather than just shoot at people, you know. Um, and so, and on Microsoft Flight Sim, you can simulate that. But for me, it was like, I just, the, the jets weren't that impressive. Um, just, it just wasn't enough content there for me. Um, but now, recently, we're getting better jets. I mean, I flew the F-22, the Top Mock, Top Mock Studios one, which I didn't realize oh, wow, was no Xbox. Yes. Uh -uh. Um, and so I was impressed by that one. The F-35 that you guys are flying right now, actually pretty impressed by that as well. Um, I have pretty much all of them. All the U.S. jets I have, uh, the F-16, F-18, Super Hornet, plus I have the mod, the free mod, the Super Warrior mod as well, which I, I don't know. I know you're on Xbox, so you probably don't know much about that one, but that thing is amazing. <laughs> I was just well, going to say that. We do have a PC representative uh Oni, he he does all of our media command and he keeps us updated on everything what's coming and what's on PC. So we're pretty familiar with what PC has, uh, especially since we do have a couple of PC users. So uh, we're, we're we're in the loop, but we are waiting for some of these uh, specialized aircraft and possibly freeware if they if they find a way to do that to come to Xbox so that we can also enjoy flying a seven C seventeen Globemaster. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I <laughs> from really... the great to you know its final destination. I'm really hoping for that uh, freeware section in the marketplace. I think that'd be great. I think that'd be great. Um, and if yeah. you the Typhoon Blue, you might want to look into that. The Typhoon is a very high fidelity aircraft, uh, even on Xbox. So uh, mm. give give that give that a look. I'm more looking into the uh, what's that other one? The uh, Osprey is the one I'm looking uh, yes. for. I'm not sure yeah. who's who made that, who's making it, or when it comes out. I saw Two One Murphy, a friend of mine, I saw him fly the other day. Uh, which mm -hmm. looks pretty cool, but um, looking forward to that. The reason the Typhoon doesn't really have my attention, this is no offense to anybody out there, but it's just some planes, I'm just, just, just not interesting to me. It doesn't matter how study level or how amazing it is. Right, right. It's just not my plane, right? Uh, and the, the Typhoon is one of those. 
Um, I think it's a very popular plane for people in the world. Um, but just at the moment for me, you know, maybe I might change my mind later. Um, just not, it's kind of like the, the Harrier as well for me. Like the Harrier is a great plane. People love that plane, but it's just, right, I don't know, right. there's something about it for me that doesn't click. Um, so I'm just not extremely interested in that one. The same with the Typhoon, but, um, but yeah, I know it's, I'm, I'm sure it is really good and, um, hopefully people will fly it and, and will enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, different strokes for different folks. And, and that's why we do offer such a, a wide array of aircraft, because uh, number one, we don't want to pigeonhole anybody into an aircraft. I mean, you can basically fly what you want, except for, you know, actually actual missions. But at the same time, we, we want people to look exposed to uh, the different aircraft that they may want to fly. So yeah. if somebody comes, they say, hey, look, I'm, it looks like you guys are mainly United States. Well, we have our foreign fighters group and uh, we have our commander for that and our instructor pilots. And we'll get you in just like we would any other aircraft so yeah it's it's uh, it's a mixed bag and people like what they like and and i don't blame them i, I am speeding up i think <laughs> um still climbing we're <laughs> thousand feet away from 30k took our sweet time getting here um but i set my speed to mark 0.89 we'll see if we get there when we level off uh we're actually just about to fly over phoenix arizona it's gonna be on our left wing Probably won't see it because of all the cloud cover out there, but um, just for people in the stream to kind of understand where we are. Uh, took off from Tucson, Arizona, from the airplane graveyard and Air Force Base out there, and now we're headed for Nellis Air Force Base over just north of um, Las Vegas. So pretty cool. And so far, man, it's the, the Microsoft is just such a beautiful sim, <laughs> and it, it seems like it doesn't matter what I fly or where I go, I'm just every time i'm just impressed and it's, i just keep re-falling in love with this game well the fact that you have the world at your fingertips i mean you just can't beat that with a stick you know yeah for sure you can actually kind of just hear, uh, see a tease of uh the city down there between the clouds mostly overcast out here uh we could do uh i mean we could, just for the heck of it since we're just about to cruise uh, if you guys are just joining the stream, uh, we do have animated doors, and we can open and close the doors. So we actually switch to, I think it's called airdrop mode. And if I go back, you'll see the door is going to open up. But it's actually it's going to open up flat. It's not going to like drop in a ramp like it does when you're on the ground. And there it is. Then we could actually simulate doing an airdrop. Now, one thing that would be really nice is if they made some kind of way to actually drop paratroopers simulatedly. <laughs> that would, that would be, be epic. Very, very nice. If they can come up with something like that, or, uh, you know, fun fact, that aircraft does drop vehicles as well. So you yeah. can drop Humphrey, you can drop parts and supplies. Uh, and, and, you know, I've seen that in real life, and I'll tell you, it's a beautiful thing. If they could bring that to the sim, it would be wonderful. That would be cool. It is, I know it's possible. I've seen things done in Microsoft that show me that things like that are possible. Like one great example is uh, our friends over at High Performance Group, the one that make the H-145 uh, helicopter, which sadly is not on Xbox, but it's a great helicopter. Um, they've done, they've they had a military variant that shoots missiles. Um, oh, uh, wow. Yeah, and actually has explosions when it contacts the ground when those missiles hit, which is crazy. Um, they also have a EMS variant, which is um, emergency medical services, a firefighter variant, that does actually extinguish fires. There's a lot of really cool things that they've figured out how to do. How they've done it, I don't know, um, but they've done things that no other developer has figured out how to do. And they're not the only developer who are going out there and you know, finding ways to, to innovate and, and take full advantage of Microsoft Flight Sim. So like stuff like that, like yeah, it sounds kind of like a crazy idea and it's not really been done in a flight sim, but I think it's possible. I think if somebody just puts their head down and, and really focuses and, and digs through the code, they could probably figure it out. Look at that. We got 35 right there behind I think, us. I right. think they can figure that out. Oh, it looks like you have company, Blue. Is that another C-17 Globemaster is yes, joining the it flight? Is. <laughs> yes, <Wow>. it is. Yes, it is. It might be the one that took off with us. I'm not sure if that's the same one or okay. not. But, uh, but yeah, we got we're here standing here at the... <laughs> standing here in the back just watching these guys behind us. <laughs> Very nice tight formation there by the by your group here. I'm really impressed by the skill. Like I I want to get like them. I want to be 
I want to be as good as them. <laughs> we, we we did a stream, like I said, last week in the 22 and in the F-18, and I was really struggling to match speed and stuff like that. And um, But yeah, this is a skill, like you said, that you guys teach. Um, like he's going to fly right into the... <laughs> <laughs> right into the cap cargo bay I think, um, I think he's going off a little bit now that might be commander viking i can't tell but that's probably <laughs> oh if you're commander viking rock your wings <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's him. yeah but you're welcome to uh i mean if you want to do this type of thing with us it doesn't have to be on the stream it's, it's you're welcome you know yeah. come to our strategic command and we'll we'll fly with you well, I, I was actually going to, I held back saying this. Are we descending? Because my control is just in. Let me check on the flight, make sure we're not dying. Uh, okay, we're maintaining out too. I think it's just kind of oscillating up and down, but we're okay. Um, but yeah, I was going to say, like, honestly, what you guys are doing right now is kind of what I've been looking for um, to be a part of. I'm not, I gotta look into and see how much time I can dedicate to that. But uh, this, what you guys have been doing is something I've been looking looking into doing since I got enough flight sims. I've always been interested in military aviation. Uh, the issue is that it seemed it seemed to me like all of the like virtual military groups were all inactive. That's what it seemed like to me, um, at least on like X plane P three D side back when I first was looking at it. Um, and well, so if I can. If I can interject, that is our main focus is activity. Uh, our wing commander, a, a lot of groups you go to and the leader is not present. I hate to say that, but they'll, you know, they'll make a group. They'll have people underneath them and they're expected to run the group and who knows how they're going to run it. We have a military hierarchy that starts with flight decks, our wing commander, and he's on every day. Uh, he's very active. He's very hands on. And uh, you're just not going to be an empty face in our not you personally but i'm just talking about anybody that joins no, you're, good. you're not going to be a number you're not going to be an empty face in the wing you're going to have a position uh you'll be a flight lead you'll be a wingman tier one you'll be highly trained and um there are solo missions there are group missions there are deployments and i know it sounds like a lot but it is tailored to who can make it who can't uh if you want to do the live portion you can like uh, an example of a live portion would be what we're doing now hey we're taking off on a deployment we're escorting all our parts and pieces to the combat area. And then we get out there and we commence combat operations. Or it can be static, where I will put out a mission for you to do on your own that affects everybody else. So I'm looking for your proof. You know, an Xbox clip, a YouTube video. Just give us the proof that you did the mission. And then uh, that's how it all comes together and, and keeps us all active. And the thing about our group is you can log in 1, 2 in the morning uh, on a holiday or a non-holiday on a Monday and there's probably going to be members. It might not necessarily be your squadron or your group, but there'll be members on. And these guys tend to get together and they'll, you know, they'll start doing training together or they'll just do a fun flight in which you can fly all the different aircraft that you want. So that's kind of how we operate. I just wanted to get that in there because activity is a big deal for us. Yeah, I think for anybody who's looking into being a part of a uh what, what do you call you guys? Is it like a uh, like what, what, like it's not a virtual airline, well, but what are you? <laughs> so we we are a a simulative a military fighter sim wing is what we are. We, we we're trying to represent all the services for the United States and foreign fighters. So uh, we don't get into the politics of things. I know there's the thing going on with Russia and Ukraine, whatever. But we we do have Russian aircraft because people like to fly them, and uh, we use them as a red air. Or we might have missions to where you're you're flying for that service, uh, but it's just a, a thing to cater to. It's to give people a home. That's what we're trying to do. Hey, I'm on the sim. I'm flying around. This is a cool aircraft. The sim is beautiful. I'm bored. Okay, well, <laughs> come up. We give you a home. We train you, and not only do you learn about your aircraft, you learn a little bit about the military if you haven't been in the military, but you become highly proficient. And people tend to uh, they tend to feel good about that. You know, you yeah. come in. You come in as a lump of clay, like I like to refer to the guys, and you leave out a sharpened spear. And uh, just look at the guys that are flying with you. That's that's the uh, the testament to our group. Yeah, yeah, they're looking really good. And I was going to say, one of the big things when you're joining a group of people um, is the activity. Like, the last thing you want to do is join a Discord or join a virtual airline or a fighter group and no one's around, you know. Um, 
So it's definitely, activity is super important when it comes to that. Uh, really quickly, before we talk more about it, I want to kind of showcase the interior of the C17. So obviously here is the left and right seat. You got a couple seats here for other people, whatever they do back there. Uh, and then here we have the crew area, another seat. And then downstairs, walk down here real quick obviously the big cargo bay everybody knows about pretty well modeled has all the seats and everything here's the uh, loadmaster's chair that's, that's a, accurate uh, blue that's very that's very accurate yeah they've really gone all out <laughs> on this thing um <laughs> and this is things I, I this hasn't gotten an update in a long time i was actually looking on flight sim to see if i could find a, a more updated version and it hasn't been updated in a while. And I was like, I wonder if they're still working on it. Have they abandoned it? Um, are they, you know, just kind of working, you know, with their heads down quietly? Are they, you know, some developers of things of this quality uh, will also like secretly just kind of tuck away and make a payware version. <laughs> uh, and so are they working on a payware version? It might be Xbox compatible as well. Who knows? Uh, either way, as it is, um, visually, it's, it's really nice. Uh, obviously, flight model wise, all the little system stuff is gonna have to take some work to do, but it's really cool, enjoyable plane to fly so far. And yesterday, I took it out for a quick test um, because I, I saw some pictures of it landing like on dirt, and I was like, I want to see what it looks like landing on dirt. <laughs> and so I went out middle of nowhere in a desert, tried to land it on the um, on the on the dirt, and it has some really nice uh, effects coming off the dirt of all the engines. It's just really cool. So. Um, very, and so very... yes, that, that is a, a real world thing. Uh, you know, there there'll be situations to where you you don't have the runway to land on a, a smooth surface, and they have to land these things on uh, improvised strips. And look at that scenery. One other thing I want to show, just as a quick um, gap, is we were talking about flight control replay earlier at the beginning of the stream. Uh, v five is coming out tomorrow so if you have the old flight control replay or maybe you don't have it at all it's a, a replay system for microsoft flight sim i highly recommend it um uh, it's i love being able to watch my landings and even my whole flight being able to watch it back you can save the replay file and go watch it a year later <laughs> like it never goes away unless you delete it um but anyways i want to show you guys something really cool about the ghost plane feature that i mentioned earlier now right now we're flying in formation with some pretty professional like aviators uh, you guys are killing it with the uh, 75th fighter squadron grim reapers uh let me bring this up real quick but if uh you're not a part of their group and uh <laughs> you're all alone and you want to imitate something like this you can use something like flight control replay and then uh, i'm actually gonna change the settings for the ghost i'll make him i don't know maybe like uh say 10 i'm not sure how far that is and hit save and close and I'm going to activate the ghost plane and see where it shows up. There we go. It might have crashed, I think, because I do have a beta version. Let me try it again. Stand by. See, this is what always happens. We try to show stuff off. It doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> That's how it always is, man. That's how it works. Hold on. Let me try it again. That's hilarious. So Blue, you're just trying to create another uh, copy of the, of the aircraft that you're in now? Yes. Flying? Okay. Yes, that is all I'm really doing. I'm um, going to try it one more time. That other Globemaster is, is hanging pretty tight, man. He's doing a good job <laughs> back there. I don't know who it is. I don't know, I don't know who that is. I don't have tags on, but he's, he's doing a pretty good job over there. All right, I pressed it, but I don't know if it's behind me. Where is it at? I got to go look for it. Oh, there it is. Yep, there it is right there. That's uh, my, I think that's my, is that me? Let me turn it on and off. Yep, that's me. Oh, yeah, so there. I have created basically a clone using Flight Control Replay V5. That's and, sweet. And um, it's, yeah, it's going to basically just fly formation with me. Uh, if I bank, it will bank. Um, it's, uh, it's affected by the wind. I can actually get ahead of it, which is pretty cool. Um, like if I turn a right turn to the south, for example, it'll, you know, it'll reposition itself to be near me. It won't always be on my left wing. It won't always be my right wing. Um, it's really interesting. I, I was playing around with it yesterday. Some people might have spotted me at Nellis Air Force Base flying in 
multiple jets <laughs> trying to test out this feature. And um, I flew an F-22 and like was like doing like a little, it just looked really cool. It was a really cool look. Um, but it's, it's a feature that they're really proud of. And um, I think they've done a really cool job of, of doing it. And it's a full fidelity model of the plane. Um, I don't, it doesn't seem to hurt my frames at all. At least the exterior model, I should say. I actually tested this in a helicopter as well. And um, it fully modeled everything. I was like, wow. So it's not like a low res duplicate. See it as well? Do the other do other people see it as well? Like no. do my pilots see it right? Oh, no, okay. your pilots won't see it. Sadly, only I will see it. it. Basically what the way it does it is it inserts an AI plane. Okay. Um uh, with your with your aircraft. So that's the way it does it. Uh, one other thing that I can show later on, uh when we land, I'll record a landing replay uh with flight control replay. But uh, another thing it does is you could basically save your replay. I'm actually gonna speed my camera up. You can save your replay, which is nothing new. Um, I think it did it before too. And then you could actually load that replay as an AI aircraft. So you don't have to, oh, look at that. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of shots you can create. Oh my <laughs> God, look at that. That is very sweet, Blue. <laughs> I like it. Very nice. We got a screenshot. I gotta get a screenshot of this. That's epic. Yeah, definitely. That's crazy. Have to. Nice. Oh my God. <laughs> what oh man that is so freaking cool um what was i talking about <laughs> <Got distracted. laughs> so excited huh <laughs> yeah i guess i was not expecting that. it even has a contrail like what come on uh we lost our other c17 oh man <laughs> it's all right but um yeah oh oh the ai so uh if i save a replay and um you know, I end my flight, or I can just stay there, whatever. I can spawn into any plane. Matter of fact, I can spawn in an F-35, and then I can go back and watch my replay of my C-17 landing at the airport at, while I'm in a different plane. I don't know how it does it, <laughs> um, but you can basically watch, like, you can, like, fly a whole air show routine and then go and sit on the stands and just watch it. Wow, look at the con. Say again. Oh yeah, the contrails as well. Yep. Yeah. David Bucacci, what's up? Oh, it's you. David Bucacci is the other C seventeen. Sweet man, bro, you're killing it right now. You might want to consider uh contacting the the seventy uh, fifth. <laughs> we have a spot for him in strategic command. Yeah, there you go, bro. There you go. Uh I know my door is still open. I'm just getting a breeze in here, it's a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how far we are away. I don't have. I don't think Vina works, so we're just gonna have to wing it on the way down. And we'll just kind of use a VFR map to get an idea. A little ways to go. We just passed Phoenix, so we're good. Once we kind of, we'll kind of. I've flown into Vegas enough to kind of get an idea when we're gonna get close. We're only at 30,000 so feet, so not too much uh, altitude to lose anyways. Go ahead. Oh, so as you get closer, Blue, those two scout aircraft are going to go and uh, make sure that the airspace is, is clear and they're going to orbit, and then uh, you and the rest of the group will land, and then they'll come in behind you. Just kind of give you an idea of what they're going to do. Uh, question to chat for you guys. Matter, matter of fact, if you're watching the stream, if you're interested, or maybe you're just curious, uh, feel free to you know send your question to the chat, and uh, I know he's going to be welcome to answer any of your questions about their um their group um but so jared is asking what server does the 75th use because he's in the uk um if he wants to join he's worried about ping uh we're mostly on the eastern server but we have guys from australia uh and in, in, in various other countries that are part of the wing and they don't seem to have any any issues good that's good yeah i'll just give it a try jared i haven't really had a lot of issues connecting with other people from other parts of the world. Um, as long as you're on the same, like, Microsoft server, it seems to, to work pretty well. I have had issues seeing other people just in general. Um, I did a bush flight a week ago, and uh, we spent about an hour <laughs> trying to get, um, trying to be able to actually see each other. Um, so it's just, I don't know, sometimes Microsoft has a bit of server issues, but figure it out. Uh, oh, yes, like that, uh, David Bukachi, the C-17 behind me, is in Africa. <laughs> smoother wow. than ever smoother than nice. ever look at him his door is open too 
Uh, I will say for those who are um, flying on my wing, I'm sorry the plane is oscillating up and down a bit. Um, that is not me, that's just autopilot. But you guys done a really good job sticking with me. Yeah, they're, they're taught to uh, react to uh, the movements of the aircraft that's leading them. So, uh, can you give me an example of like some like the missions you guys kind of run over there? So, uh, we do uh, close air support missions. We do uh, combat flight patrol missions. Just basically anything they do in real life. Of course, it has to be simulated, and that's the that's the tricky part. Um, we will use our foreign fighters as red air. Uh, we'll have them go out to the same. Uh, like we'll have somebody trying to take out a target. We'll have them defending the target, and they merge, and then they uh, they do a dogfight. And we actually have a 75th arms room in the Discord to where if you have a question on how to uh, employ the weapon systems, uh, you can go into that arms room. There will be a video, an example, like uh, if you're using a Fox 2 heat seeker, uh, you have to have a certain visual in your HUD. You have to be a certain distance, and you have to have a certain time frame before you can consider that a kill. So, uh, like I say, it's, you have to use your imagination. Uh, some of it is easier than, than other aspects. But um, you know, I think we did a pretty good job of, of, of simulating most missions. And uh, you, you get rewarded for it. You get uh, skulls for kills. Uh, you get what's called uh, shacks for, for ground target kills. And uh, you can become an ace in the wing. And uh, you can get rank. Um, and like the more, the more stuff that you do, the more active you are. Well, the more you'll get promoted and move up the chain. And uh, we do kind of pick out the guys that are the most active. And that's who we like to make flight leads. And, you know, like I say, if you get enough, you become an instructor pilot and uh, and so on and so forth. Cool. That's very cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Really inspiring, too, honestly, because um, uh, on DCS World, me and probably 10 other guys, I think, right now um, have been kind of softly <laughs> trying to organize um <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> we've been i guess we've been softly trying to organize our group because we call it the blue arrow force it's it's a very it's it's uh we have cool liveries that's basically it right now um <laughs> but we're all you know very various um like skill level when it comes to different jets and stuff like that so it's just kind of a group where we like we just like to fly together on dcs world and attempt to do missions but we would like to in the future um to do something a bit more organized um uh, where we could you know give oh look at that dry lake bed down there that's so cool that um, is very sweet um just something more organized you know where we could actually have like a ranking system a training program because i want to be able to train people as they come over a lot of people get into dcs and it's very intimidating uh learning um how dcs works by itself and then learning how the aircraft work uh, so we want to start training people um you know and, and helping them as they start their dcs journey but we're just not organized yet right now because part of it mostly is because of me um because of my inconsistency and in being busy i'm not able to focus always on dcs sometimes i'm focused on microsoft flight sim whether i'm doing sponsored videos or you know whatever that thing may be it's like a lot of things go on so um, but we do have some great members who um, have been carrying it and, and helping me out. But the point is, what you guys are doing is really inspiring. Um, so what we kind of would like to do sometime in the, in the far future. Um, but really cool. I'm, like I said, what you guys are doing is something I've been looking for um, since I got into Flight Sim. And um, I, I'm really, I'm not just saying this because we're live and because you're on the phone. Um, but I really am going to look into, you know, your, your program and, and see if I can, you know, do more either collaborations or just flying with you guys off stream as well. I think would be pretty cool because um, there's a lot of fun to be had. And I keep telling people this, there's a lot of fun to be had in Microsoft Flight Sim as a whole. Um, and on the Milsim side, it's a lot of fun to be had as well. But you got to, like you said, like you said, told me earlier, you got to use your imagination and, you know, some community never helps as well. Yeah, I just need to be a uh, part of a group, and, and like you say, use your imagination. Uh, like I say, if you're if you're if you're all if you're lone wolfing and you're by yourself, it's it's just never fun, man. Uh, get part of a group, even if it's not ours. Get with some friends, get with a group, and you'll get a lot more out of the sim. I promise. It's funny. I, I tell this story a bunch too. Um, when before I got into flight sims, I was playing GTA, and I was actually a part of a fighter wing group on GTA with the laser jets, um, <laughs> and. I was with them for a couple of years. It was a lot of fun. And we did like um, 
uh, different types of training ops. We did merge practice, and we would merge against other fighter wing groups and kind of compete against them and stuff. It was a lot of fun. And we did uh, server takeovers. It was like, all kind of things. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was fun. But this was, again, before Microsoft and all that. Uh-oh, got another big stutter. Sorry about that. All right, we should be getting pretty close. I can see the mountains are changing down beneath us. Uh, I can see that river right there, which is going to turn into the Hoover Dam and not too long. Uh, and lead up to Lake Mead, which I think I see off my... Is that just... That's uh, just a shadow over there. Um, but yeah, I think we need to start making our way down into Nellis now. I'm going to double check. Uh, so we're 30 miles from something. This GPS is very vague. <laughs> doesn't give me much information. I yeah, I mean, it, it, it is freeware, so... Yeah, yeah. Good, but it, it is freeware. <laughs> yeah, if we have to circle the... Yeah, wait, definitely gonna have the circle we're way too high coming up to the lake in about 50 miles it looks like and let's see i don't know even know how to make the plane descend so we're gonna take our time getting down <laughs> okay i guess i just start scrolling down so we're descending now <laughs> right, i'm gonna start with 10,000, and then we'll keep making our way down um and I'm, sure, I mean, I'm sure you guys are a lot more um knowledgeable as i than i am what runways does nellis usually use well, I don't know offhand. I'm sure my guys already have it up. Uh, they're probably contacting ATC because there's a lot of chatter going on in the background that you probably don't hear. I hear them talking because I have them on the mic, but uh, uh, I can ask them right quick. Just give me one second. Yeah, go ahead. Spider, hey, okay, welcome to the stream. Good welcome to see you, man. Mad Matt to UK, welcome aboard. Uh, reach, wait, is call signs of use for heavies that are going from point A to point B? Carry go personnel. I'm Raf. Oh, that's cool. Like, in real life, you work on F-15 Strike Eagles? That's dope. Uh, somebody posted a picture on my Discord the other day of them refueling, I think it was a Super Hornet. I can't remember who it was. I think I just froze again. If I did. I think it's because uh, Nellis and the LA area I have Fly Tampa, Las Vegas scenery. Uh, all that's loading in right now. So I'm getting a few stutters as we're approaching the city. We're currently flying so, uh, over the lake. Oh, go ahead. They're saying two one left is what my guys are calling out. All right, so that's gonna be landing south then. Roger. Sounds good. We'll take two one left. Uh, it is a bit overcast, but it should be high overcast. Once we get beneath these clouds, we should be able to hopefully be able to see everything. All right, we are descending. We're definitely too high, so we're gonna circle the airport until we get down. Oh my god! Look at all the traffic <laughs> on our map. <laughs> Since we're flying together, I don't want to just like nosedive and lose everybody, so we'll keep it civilized. Yeah, well, they're 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 pretty proficient, man. I think you can kind of do what you would like to do, and they will they'll react. Uh, like I say, I have him on the mic, and I can just hear them communicating. There's a lot that goes into this. I wish that your audience can hear what I'm hearing because yeah. they are really communicating because they they want it to look good, and they you know they want to represent uh, the 75th and the. Uh, you know, let you have a, a you know a good experience on the stream. So they are. I'll yeah. tell you this much: you guys look great already. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how the stream feels about it, but you guys look great to me. Um, and sadly, again, I just stuttered again. I think it's the scenery loading, but um, you guys done a great job dealing with that issue. You know, being able to reform with me, uh, rejoin with me. Um, with the you know freezing up for two seconds is a pretty big difference. Um, right. And timing there, but yeah, we're sitting down into the Las Vegas area. We still see our um, our formation plane, our ghost plane on our left, this is um you know obviously gonna be there until I turn it off. I will turn it off before we land. I'll just turn on the regular replay mode. Man, I'm getting bad stutters now. Sheesh, I am sorry yeah, it could just about be the scenery, that. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the scenery I have. I'm like getting them every few seconds now. We were actually having a problem with the, a lot of the guys on Xbox had uh, downloaded the Vegas pack uh, yeah. as well as Nellis, and it was it was crashing the sim. So wow, yeah, that's unfortunate. I, I just wish that when they re released the updates, um, the actual developers would go back in. And I know it's a lot of work to kind of update their product, but yeah. you know, it does make for 
a disappointing experience sometimes you're coming in like we are now and you, you want to have that beautiful landing and then you know it crashes or stutters and yeah, that's, that's unfortunate i would actually because i don't really spend a whole lot of time flying on xbox but what are some issues uh actually before we go into that we're flying overhead right now nellis uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn autopilot off and i am going to head north east um, and probably loop back once we lose some altitude. Actually, I think I'll just do a few right turns around here and then I'll hit that way. Um, but I was going to ask you, what are some things that, uh, I mean, besides the lack of being able to get a lot of the, you know, the mods that you want, uh, what are some things that you guys are struggling with on the Xbox side? Well, I mean, just in general, lots, lots of crashes. Now it's, it's gotten better. Uh, they have done some updates with the world updates and, and sim updates and stuff like that. Uh, I just think it's native to the sim, period, whether PC or or Xbox. But uh, yeah, crashes is the main thing. Like, like I say, you're coming in on for you know a beautiful landing, uh, you know, or coming off a mission, and these guys need to land to send their proof, and then you know they crash, and <laughs> there goes your your flight log. So yeah, that's, that's never that's good. A, yeah. Uh, another thing is like I don't know if you're familiar with this particular issue, but there's the Xbox Series X and there's the Xbox Series S. Well, the S users can't see people in the same plane. For like sometimes people will come up as a they'll be in an F-35, but they'll come up as a Bush plane or they'll come up as a Learjet or whatever. And and most of the Xbox guys can still see. Like if you own the aircraft, you can actually see the aircraft. Uh, I think that's having to do with the power of the x versus the s and maybe they can't you know they can't work with that but um they probably need to come up with a fix for that because it, it is very annoying i mean you're out there uh, in our case like we're running a mission you know and we have a mixed bag you know f-35s f-22s and whatnot and then you know some guys are coming up as as lear jets and you really can't pause the mission for that and it's just uh, it kind of takes away from the immersion yeah big time you you never want to be in a military <laughs> You never want to be flying military formation and have a freaking Learjet. I know you guys are sadly not able to see me uh, on like on the Xbox as a C-17 because you don't have this mod. Um, right. But, you know, if you guys are all on Xbox and you're flying Xbox compatible things, it doesn't, have, it doesn't make any sense to not be able to to see each other that's in the exact, correct That's exactly version. right. You, you hit the nail on the head. It's like if, if you're on Xbox and this aircraft exists on X xbox you should see it as a c-17 globemaster and not a uh 747 <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> for sure right, i'm at eight thousand feet 230 knots making a right turn trying to make my way back towards nellis we're now north of the field mm. and visibility is not great down here I'm gonna head straight east. I'm about to get over these mountains. I'm about to get somewhere out to get over these mountains. A very loose um, entry into Nellis today, since we're in a very basic um, navigation-wise aircraft. Usually, I try to shoot an approach into there and stuff like that. But today, we're just right. gonna try to get in however we can. And uh, honestly, I think it will be really fun. I'm not sure if you guys usually simulate this, but I love to do a a break, an overhead break. Oh, we, that is one of the things we train on is an, an overhead break, actually. So if you do that, they will pick up on it. They will, they, will, they will say, oh, he's doing an overhead break, and they will follow suit. So you don't worry about, like, deviating from what you were going to uh, do initially because they will pick up on that. Copy that. Dub, woke to stream, man. Skylar Oliver, yes, this is a freeware plane. The uh, C-17 Globemaster on Flight Sim T. Oh, I think I have the link in the description down uh, on YouTube. Oh yeah, we're getting some rain to the north of the field. I'm also noticing behind us, we had um, had uh, some snow on the tops of the mountains and I was here last week and there was no snow there. So very cool feature, Microsoft Flight Sim. All right, bank into the right, 7,500. About, we'll get our speed down below 250 here. Visibility is not great, so we gotta watch out for these mountains. Got some showers, some scattered showers in the area. And this thing loses speed like a like a like a maniac. <laughs> flying man. rock, huh? Yeah, man, flying rock for real. Right, I'm gonna hit record on flight control replay, so you can start recording from now on.
and watch everything back. Uh, I believe, and I have not figured out how to do it yet, so I want to say sorry to the developer. <laughs> I can't show this off today. Uh, but there is a way um, to record other sim objects around you. Uh, I think we need to get over this mountain and then turn right, I believe. Yeah. Uh, you can record other sim objects around you. So, like, say, for example, today we have... I don't know if it works with multiplayer objects, but we have a couple objects around us. We have an F-35, another C-17. Um, they should be... Oh, getting some rain on the windshield. Sweet. Um, you should be able to record them, too. And watch them back on your replay as well. But I could be wrong about that. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is going to be a spicy landing here with these conditions. It will be very spicy. Uh, that weather is pretty intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> We're flying through showers. There's showers all to the north. And they're, they're moving. They're on the way. Like, they're not sitting here. All right, we're just to the north of the field. I do not have eyes yet. All right, we should be coming in for final. I'll try the overhead brake. I've never done it in a C-17, but I'm going to try it. Um, by the way, I think it's this week, actually. I think it is. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this. Um, 75th, but there is a anniversary air show event going on at Nellis in real life. Okay. Yeah, am I lost? <laughs> what is that? I know it's it's right here because we're in the Bravo now. There's mountains in front of me. This is why I'm confused. Oh, it's that way. Okay, we need to make a, a sharper turn. That's why. <laughs> like, why well, are there mountains over there? Go around for free. <laughs> <laughs> why are there mountains where the airport should be? That's what I'm... <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's, a, there's a, a big air show happening in Nelson in real life. If you look on Sky Vector or any you know chart place that has TFRs, there's a temporary flight restriction it's supposed to be there. I think it's this weekend. I think um, I was flying there last week. I saw it, and it said that it happened sometime this week. Yeah, I'll look it up. Uh, I like those air shows, especially at a iconic place such as Nellis or, you know, at Miramar or Pensacola NES, those type shows. Uh, that, man, this thing feels heavy. Like, I am really on the joystick right now. I'm putting in so much throttle to keep this thing from falling out of the sky. Literally feels like a rock. Flaps are not down or anything. All right. I see the field. Wow, it's much closer than I thought it was. All right, so we're going to definitely fly over because we're not landing. Um, on our right is Las Vegas Auto Speedway. I'm a big racing fan, so every time I fly over it, I point it out. <laughs> Never been there in real life, but I um, always recognize it. So this is going to be our runway right here. We will be approaching from this side. I'm thinking, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do a break to the left. I'm going to go around that mountain and come back in for left traffic. So we're going to do, I'm going to put my gear down. I'm going to go full dirty here. Just for the fans down there at Nellis. Gear should be coming down. Flap should be coming down to get nice and let's in the line. We probably could smash it down if we wanted to. We're gonna do a nice overhead. Like they do with the air shows. Once we get to the midway point, we'll clean it up. Full throttle. And we'll roll out at the end. There's Las Vegas off our nose right there. All right, and pull it off. Let's see how how agile this big thing is. Not very. <laughs> Probably not very. Uh, that was going to be my exact words. <laughs> not, not very. <laughs> I didn't stall it, though. Yeah, my, my guys are used to this. So they're probably right with you. Uh... I mean, I know you don't have in, uh, time to pan because you're trying to make the landing, but I'm sure they're with you. Yeah, I, I'm, they're pretty close, so I'm pretty good. So yeah, I'm going to make my way around this mountain and then come back in. I'm at, one thing I've always wondered, because Nellis is a place I go to pretty often uh, on in the sim, and um, I've always kind of wondered about the procedures uh, for military activity out here, because it is literally next to a suburb <laughs> um, area. 
Like, there's no way these guys are afterburner. Like, no, they, uh, they probably uh, probably have a restriction to. Uh, they probably just use their afterburner to take off and then and then cut it because you know it can cause damage and uh, noise pollution. Uh, so they probably go out to the Nellis Ranges or whatever, and then they you know shoot and scoot out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody sent me a really cool picture on Discord the other day. They found on Google Maps or Google Earth, um, when, you know how it takes pictures or whatever. There was an A10 doing a strafe run caught on the Google Earth uh, map. Really That's cool. nice. Really, really cool. All right, we're now on a left downwind. Roger. Can't see the field because on the other side of those mountains. That is all right. I am like 80% throttle keeping this thing from falling out of the sky. Is my door still open? It is. <laughs> That's probably. We should close that. <laughs> Oh, you know why? My speed brakes are on. That makes sense. Oh yeah, now we're moving. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, let's see if we can shoot this approach, make it on our first try. Oh, I'm sure you will. You seem like you're pretty proficient at this. I fly a lot of planes. <laughs> Just say <like> that. <laughs> so do you get to test a lot of the new planes from developers? Do they kind of reach out to you and... Uh... Hey, Baloo, can you test this out for us or anything uh, like that going on? You know, thankfully, yeah, I do. Um, in the recent couple of years, I've had a lot of opportunities. Not so much test. Um, I hope that's not it right there because I'm too close. You're down, left base. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really get to test them like very often. Usually, I just get an early version to kind of showcase. And obviously, they allow me to give feedback on it at that point, too. But usually, at that point, it's already done. And people are going to get it the way I have it, unless there's something dramatically horrible about it. Right. All right, I am actually going to bring speed brakes in because I am high and fast. And here we come, guys, off at our 11 o'clock. That is Nellis Air Force Base. And in the distance on the horizon is, I say New York City, Las Vegas. And it's a shame that the Las Vegas pack is not working correctly because it's a beautiful pack, especially at night. You coming oh, in at yeah. night, all the strip and hotels and uh, things of that nature. So it's a very, very beautiful pack. Agreed. All right, I'm turning the hood on just for people to see it. I'm not really going to use it. I don't think it's accurate. The vertical velocity vector and whatnot, I don't think really work correctly in Microsoft Flight Sim. At least I noticed that in the F-22. I couldn't really trust it. So I'm just going to land it visually, but I'll leave the HUD on for people who want to see that there's a HUD. Quite right. blurry. Yeah, and some of the aircraft do have uh, better avionics than others, um, accurate HUDs and, and the such. Yep. Little Wendy. Come on, come on, come on. There we are, we're down. Comes a the nose. Um, there's reversers, but I don't know how to activate them with this controller. So, and look at that, the flyby, the 35. Thank you guys so much for the escort. <laughs> you're welcome, man. Like, seriously, like, that was amazing. <laughs> seriously. And like I say, Blue, you're welcome to fly anytime if you want to do another stream or you just want to even even join us and be in the strategic command or whatever you want to do. Just, you know, you're you're welcome to come. I'll say this one thing I will surprise you guys were available at this time of day. <laughs> that was what blew me. I was like, really? You guys are so, <laughs> so back to the activity thing. Uh, we have enough members to where uh, it pretty much shifts. Like you'll have people at two, two in the morning. Uh, you have people at six in the morning. And uh, like, luckily for the stream, uh, a lot of our command were available today. So the guys that are flying now are star creme de la creme are our wing commander, our training officer, and one of our group commanders is out there. And the other guys with flight leads are uh, high-ranking wingmen, so. That's great. That's great. Well, they did a great job. Um, for some reason, I'm stuck, so I'm just going to slew myself off the runway. <laughs> <laughs> Trusty slew. <laughs> never Trusty go wrong with slew. that. It's so funny. <laughs> I never used slew before in any other flight sim. I always thought it was just like, 
you know, how dare you slew yourself? But, <laughs> how dare you slew? <laughs> right. <laughs> but now I use it quite often just to get myself out of situations like these. So, yeah. move so, so we don't we don't encourage the slew up for obvious reasons. But during training, we do allow some of the newbies like, hey, you know, go ahead and get back with the flight rather than going to the world map and logging in that way. So yeah, exactly. I was gonna find myself a spot to park. Uh, so I certainly appreciate you having us out here and giving us this exposure. That's, that was very cool of you. And uh, if you don't mind, I would just like to acknowledge the guys that were on the flight. Oh, yes, please. Uh, please do. Yeah, so you have Captain Cool, our wing commander, Skywolf, uh, Commander Guns. Uh, he's our media guy. He also has his own YouTube channel. Um, my uh, pilot, uh, Dead Tiger, he's a high-ranking wingman in Charlie Group. Uh, Glass, as you met, he's a Delta Group commander. And our training officer, uh, Viking, who's Yayo Protocol. So um, shout out to those guys. Thank you for representing us really well. And, and thank you for having us, uh, Blue. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm blown away. I really am. Uh, I'm watching your guys come in for landing now, formation. And, you know, it's just, yeah. I'm, yeah. You guys are the real deal. Seriously. Like, you guys are the real deal. Uh, oh, 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 that's definitely not one of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there, there's, let everyone know there's, there's stragglers and uh, they're not one of us. <laughs> yeah, there's a few people here who are not a part of the group. So, uh, yeah, you can, there's a, a very obvious difference. Um, <laughs> but I will say thank you to those of you who did join us um, in the flight. If you weren't a part of the 75th, um, it's definitely an enjoyable flight. Thank you again to 75th for the escort. Um, would love to thank every single one of you, like personally, um, for doing this flight today, for taking the time to um, to come and, and escort us on our stream today and support my channel. Um, definitely, again, if you guys are interested in being a part of the 75th Fighter Wing Grim Reapers, which is who was flying with us today, there is a Discord link in my YouTube description right now. If you guys want to go and get involved and start the process of, uh, of getting, being a part of their their squadron uh and also there's a youtube video as well down in the description if you can check it out and you can learn more about what they do and it shows off all the different planes that they fly um very cool very cool um you guys are definitely doing it right it sounds like you guys really have a passion for this you love it um your community sounds great as well and i'm um, yeah i mean even if we're not you know even if i don't join you guys at some point even if i don't um <laughs> <laughs> it's getting crazy out here. Even if I don't, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I would still love to just kind of stay in contact with you guys, see what you guys oh, no are problem. doing. If you're doing no like problem. a, um, you know, an air show, I know you, you didn't really mention it in the stream today, but if you guys are doing like a virtual air show or something like that, would love to come and just spectate it, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to stay in contact uh, for sure. I'm definitely, uh, like I said, I would love to fly with you guys again. Maybe, uh, I wouldn't say in a fighter because I, I don't think I'm ready. I'm not to the I'm not to the level of what you guys are flying for me to be in a fighter. Uh, it's better for me to be in a transport vehicle or an airliner at the moment. But yeah, we'll see some ways to be creative and, and collaborate in the future. It seems like the viewers enjoyed it. Again, I'm hoping that they will get involved with you uh, with with you guys in the future, and hopefully this can lead to some beautiful stuff, man. Thank you again for coming on on, on voice and answering questions. And it definitely would have been a whole different vibe if it was just me flying around. <laughs> Uh, without your commentary yeah anytime uh you're very welcome and, and like i say thank you for having us and i do have one alibi so your member it sounds like he's he's, he's subscribed to you or whatever the, the guy from africa he's very good uh like i was very impressed with his flying and uh actually glad he showed up me <laughs> to too me too that's david bukachi <laughs> shout out to him. you bro We're representing africa in the house away my friend good to see you thank you for flying along with us and yeah you impressed these guys so you, you got something so Bukachi, if you're into this kind of thing man definitely hit them up like you said they do have a pc um like side of things as well and support on that side so <clears throat> i think they would definitely enjoy having you and i'm sure he has um you know some other jets that he probably could join in in xboxes and stuff too so um but yeah um anything else you want to say or uh and i guess shout out before we leave i am gonna not leaving just yet we're gonna watch the replay of my landing um but anything else you want to say as far as uh for your guys anything or anything else that they want to relate um to the stream either well if you, if you give me one second i'll i'll, I'll 
hit him up on the mic right quick. Just give me one second. All right, sounds good. While you're doing that, I am going to get the replay uh, loaded else? up. And I'm going to watch our replay back. Using Flight Control Replay V5. Again, comes out tomorrow. Okay. All right. Be on the sim market. So, uh, so Go Blue, ahead. they just, uh, my, my wing commander just wanted to stress that there is that trailer out there. Uh, I believe you have it in the description. I'm not yep. sure or link yep. to it. Uh, but if you guys are interested in joining the 75th Fighter Wing, uh, check out that trailer. If that's this, if that's something that you desire, uh, join the Discord. Uh, we'll have one of our trainers get with you, and then uh, we'll start the process. Amazing. I'm trying to find a. Uh... Mad Matt had a question. Can you resend that question real quick? Because I can't find it. Um, if you don't mind resending that question, we can ask it uh, while we're queuing up the replay. I'm actually going to load it up right now. And play. Yeah, I didn't even realize my freaking speed brakes were on half of that approach. <laughs> Trust me, that's a very common mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that's on me. Thank you, gun smoking. Thank you, gun smoking. Appreciate that, man. Fabio, what up? Uh, is there going to be a flight control replay for Xbox? Uh, I mean, hopefully one day, but I don't know that they'll have one. Um, you know, once they make the changes to Xbox with the Wazim and whatnot, you'll see a lot more things come to Xbox, like replay modes and third-party planes. So here's our flyby over Nell's Air Force Base right before I did my heavy overhead break. I did it dirty, so I did actually put my gear down. I think that's when I put my speed brakes out and I forgot about them. Cleaned them up. And you can see replay is recording all that stuff. So we recorded me putting the gear down, putting the gear up, flaps up, all that. Made a hard left turn. Are we ever gonna get the C17 on Xbox or on the marketplace? Hopefully, man, hopefully. I mean, I've been rooting for you guys, for all my Xbox people. I've been rooting for you guys for a, while, a long time. I, I enjoy The Sims so much, and there's so many great third-party add-ons that come out for it, and I know that you guys would love it as well. And honestly, the majority, of the, the majority, <clears throat> the majority of the simmers out there now are on Xbox, so we cannot forget about <laughs> them. <laughs> like you guys are the majority now, which is crazy, because uh, just a couple years ago, you know, <laughs> y'all didn't exist. <laughs> so uh, it's pretty cool to have them here. So here we come in for a uh, speed racer out for our. Landing into Nellis again, flying over Speedway there on our right. That was a very nice recovery, Blue. I'm I, I'm very impressed. Yeah, it didn't look good for a while. <laughs> it didn't look good for a second. <laughs> Looked real sketchy for a bit, man. It really did. But yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> man, I love the way the gear come out on this thing. I didn't even know that they like rotate when they come out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's very nasty. I like it. All right, here it comes. Kind of kind of squirrely. I got a little bit of a crosswind or something. As we got near the ground and then touched down. And again, in re reality, they do have thrust reversers. I could not find the key for it. So we went ahead and used about half the runway. But we could have got stopped like in what a few, a few thousand feet i think it's um i was reading i think it can land i think three thousand feet i believe is the uh minimum something like that yeah it's oh. crazy that you can stop that big jet like that uh but it, they do it for tactical purposes yeah all right here we go from the gear view beautiful gear view i can't I mean, this is a free version. Like, can you imagine if somebody comes out with like a payware version? How much better <laughs> it's gonna be? Like, man. Oh, well, that's that's what I was thinking in the back of my head. I was like, if this is the freeware, if I mean, I don't know who makes this freeware, but if they do the paid version, uh, they're gonna make a lot of, a lot of ducats. <laughs> oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. Paid. It's a very nice aircraft, so I, I really hope they bring it to uh, Xbox. Uh, and with the way that things are going, it seems that they might. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, looking forward to that type of action. All right, just one more of you guys, and then we're going to wrap it up for today, and I'm going to let these guys go. Thank you. <laughs> I won't take up too much of y'all's time today, um, but it's uh, it's been really fun, really, really fun. 
All right, on the has... right wing view this time around, approaching into Nellis, they don't really have a window here, so I just made a hole. <laughs> but here we go. I think it also, they came out with some nice sounds that would make it really nice too. Um, and using FS Realistic for that head shake, there it is. It's something satisfying for me when you land at a military aircraft, I mean, military airport with a military plane. Like, because there's a lot of great payware scenery for international airports, stuff like that, but there's not very many for military right. air bases, you know? And so when you're flying a military aircraft and you want to fly to one of these nice sceneries, it's like, all right, that's cool. Yeah, this airport does have a military base on, on the side of it. That's nice. But um, it's even really cool when you land at an air base and it's actually static aircraft. Like when I land here, you got C-17s on the side. You got C-130s over there. The freaking Thunderbirds are out there hanging out. <laughs> like, F-16. It's just so... Well, I was just going to say, it's, it's just so exhilarating. Uh, even when I did it in real life in the uh, UH-60, when you come into uh, Bagram Air, uh, Air Base in Afghanistan or you come into just a garrisoned uh, airfield here in the States, it's hustle and bustle. I mean, there's there's jet aircraft, there's rotary wing. Uh, you see the people in, in military uniforms and it's just like a... Uh, like uh, like a nice environment like an exhilarating exciting environment and i and you know i was just very grateful i was able to take part in something like that so i completely understand what you're saying and that's coming from a guy that did it in real life so i could just imagine people on the sim coming into these military airfields yeah for sure well i want to say one more time before we head out man thanks again for your service anybody else in no chat uh, who's uh served their country um and the rest of your squad out there as well thank you for what you do um you are the i'm not sure what percentage it is but you are the small percentage that are out there who are willing to do it and uh we're super grateful for it so allow us to be here sitting in my room <laughs> simulating it um so pretty cool and thank you so much for that and i was gonna say one more thing what was it gonna be micah thank you for watching man good to see you fabio t claire woods thank you as well satish 8299er thank you very much Ahmed, thank you. Mr. Fuzzy Studio, thank you so much. Uh, what's my yoke setup? Uh, in the description, I'm using Thrustmaster A10 Warthog. Uh, yoke, sorry, not yoke, joystick and throttle whole task uh, with a TFRP rudder pedal. So um, if you want any information on that, all that is down in the description. It might be a 15% code you can use for the T-Flight full kit. I'm not sure if it still works, but it's still there. It's down there. Give it a try. Uh, thank you again, Mad Matt UK, Daryl as well, David Bukachi, Mad One Racing, Fabio T, Emily, FVI, Bim, thank you so much for chilling with us, Bone King, thank you so much, Willie Merritts, thank you, Lord Vapor Max, thank you so much, and uh, to the rest, if I missed you, sorry, <laughs> but uh, until next time, remember you have three choices, give up, give in, and give it all you got, peace, love, and God bless you, I will see you guys next time, next video, we are all the way out, sheesh. All right, you...